I am attorney Marie Chris Batan Lasco. This is my virtual classroom. Welcome to my YouTube channel. In this channel, I shall aim to simplify the law. I shall discuss concepts and principles of law in under 10 minutes. Hi everyone, welcome back to another video still on your revised corporation code. For this video, I want to talk about three types of shares. Your founder's shares, your redeemable shares, and your treasury shares. These shares are actually covered by Section 7, Section 8, and Section 9 of your Revised Corporation Code. Section 7 of your Revised Corporation Code talks about founder's shares. What are founder's shares? These are actually the shares that are being offered to the organizers or promoters of the corporation. Now, usually, these shares have rights that are not given to other types of shares. There's a special privilege given to them. An example of a privilege given to them, and which you can also find under Section 7, is the right to be voted on as a director of a corporation, and also the executive right to vote in the election of directors. Now, remember, however, that this privilege on the executive right to vote and be voted on, your Section 7 gives a limit to that. And the limit is only for five years. Five years counted from what period of time? Five years from the date of incorporation. So while founders' shares may have this right, um, holder rather of a founder's share may have the executive right to vote or be voted on in an election of director of a, of a, of directors rather of a corporation. There is an expiration, and that is five years from the time of the incorporation of the corporation. Now, how about redeemable shares? What are redeemable shares? You will find redeemable shares under Section 8 of your Revised Corporation Code. Let's read Section 8. Redeemable shares may be issued by the corporation when expressly provided in the Articles of Incorporation. They are shares which may be purchased by the corporation from the holders of such shares upon the expiration of a fixed period, regardless of the existence of unrestricted retained earnings in the books of the corporation and upon such other terms and conditions stated in the Articles of Incorporation and the Certificate of Stock representing the shares subject to the rules and regulations issued by the Commission. Another term for redeemable shares would also be your callable shares. What are these redeemable shares? These are shares that have been already sold and held, sold to rather, and held by a stockholder to which the corporation has the option of calling back or buying back or redeeming from the shareholders. That is why it's called redeemable. Now, in Section 8, it will tell you that the terms of the redemption should be written or placed or provided for in the articles of incorporation so you and also in the certificate of stock now it must be stated there as to the period of time that the corporation may redeem or buy back these redeemable shares is the corporation under obligation to buy back or redeem these shares, these redeem redeemable shares? The answer is no. This is optional on the part of the corporation. The corporation may or may not redeem those shares. Also, under Section 8, it talks about the unrestricted retained earnings. It says there, that the corporation can redeem or buy back these redeemable shares even without the existence of unrestricted retained earnings. What then 
is this unrestricted retained earnings. These are actually accumulated earnings of the corporation that has not been restricted or that has not been segregated for a particular purpose. Like, for example, restricting such earnings for expansion. So these are earnings that are actually free. That's why it's termed unrestricted reading earnings. So Section 8 does not require that the corporation has unrestricted earnings for the corporation to be able to redeem these redeemable shares. Now, why am I emphasizing the unrestricted rating earnings? This is because the general rule actually is that when a corporation will purchase its own shares, there must be the existence of unrestricted rating earnings that would be enough to buy, to, to buy back the shares of a corporation, and you find that under Section 40, 40. Under Section 8, that actually provides for an exception to the general rule under Section 40. And the exception is for redeemable shares where your corporation can buy back or redeem the redeemable shares even without unrestricted retained earnings. So this is an exception to the general rule that is provided under Section 40 on the corporation's power to buy back shares. What now is the effect of the redemption of these shares? What happens when the corporation buys back the redeemable shares? What happens actually is that these shares um, will now be retired. And the corporation can no longer sell them back unless it is otherwise stated in the Articles of Incorporation. In other words, if the Articles of Incorporation does not say that the corporation can sell it back, the general rule is these redeemable shares, when purchased back by the corporation, is now considered as retired and can no longer be sold again. This is contrary to treasury shares, which can actually be sold again. So your treasury shares, you can find that under Section 9 of the Revised Corporation Code. Let's read Section 9. It says, Treasury shares are shares of stock which have been issued and fully paid for, but subsequently reacquired by the issuing corporation through purchase, redemption, donation, or some other lawful means. Such shares may again be disposed of for a reasonable price fixed by the board of directors. So what are treasury shares? Treasury shares are those shares that have already been sold by the corporation and it has been fully paid for. And the corporation gets it back or buys them back. Not necessarily shares that are redeemable shares. It could be other types of shares. And the reacquisition of those shares may be through donation by the stockholder or the reason for them buying buying it back would be to um it could be to eliminate fractional shares as when shareholders would have uh, a fraction of a share as a consequence of a stock dividend, which I will be discussing in another video. So for any lawful purpose that your corporation would decide to reacquire or buy back the shares, those are treasury shares. For treasury shares, as opposed to the redeemable shares that I earlier mentioned, it is required that there must be unrestricted retained earnings to cover for the purchase of these shares. Your treasury shares are, uh, your treasury shares are then covered by your Section 40 of the Revised Corporation Code that requires the existence of unrestricted retained earnings so that that would be the source of money to be used to buy back those shares. 
unlike your redeemable shares. So what is the effect once a corporation buys back its own shares under Section 9? Those shares now would become the property of a corporation. It does not revert to its unissued shares. It does not get retired. In other words, your corporation can actually sell it again at a price fixed by your board of directors. Now, if these shares remain in the treasury, meaning it is not being sold again by the corporation, then the treasurer, treasury shares are not considered as outstanding shares, meaning they do not get a vote. They cannot... Um, they do not have any right at all because clearly it is not being held by any shareholder. It now becomes a property of the corporation. So that is it for this video. I hope you now understand the difference between your redeemable shares and your treasury shares and you also now get to understand what are founders shares so again that is your section 7 8 and 9 of your revised corporation code again i hope you learned something from this video and i'll see you in the next i hope you have learned something from this video if you have please click like subscribe and that notification bell so that you will be notified of new video uploads thank you for watching see you next time in mbl classroom